PGA Tour 2K21 is just a little bit under a week away from launch at the time of me recording this now. But if you are watching this on the as it as the video goes live, it will be just a matter of a few short or long, whatever way you want to look at it, uh, hours until the game does finally release and all you guys can get your hands on it. Um, but I would also just like to say, before we do properly start the video as well, just a massive thanks once again to 2K for providing me with early access to the game. It is very, very much appreciated. But... You may also even be watching this after the game is released, um, but whenever you're watching this, I hope the tips that I do have here in this video will help you out on your way to starting off your career in PGA Tour 2K21. All of these tips will be in no particular order, but let's get things straight underway right now. So the very first time that you build up PGA Tour 2K21, obviously you're going to be doing the tutorial, and you will have to go through what I'm going to talk about here in this tip, um, no matter what during that anyway but you can do it any time that you want and that is calibrating your swing and this is going to be a very very useful function it's it's great that they have added this into this uh this game now um as one thing that it's going to eliminate across the board now is in tgc 2019 a lot of xbox one players will all agree that when they played then on ps4 in particular the in particular i can't remember about pc but going from Xbox One to PS4, it was a lot easier to be able to shoot low scores, swing straight and whatever on PS4 than it was on Xbox One. But with the addition of the swing calibration now, it's going to be a lot, a lot easier um, to get that downswing tempo. And as I did mention there a moment ago, you will do it in in the tutorial when you first boot up the game. But if you want to do it any time, maybe if maybe it's been a cold day or something like that, or you're you're just tired and you want to just recalibrate, all you have to do is just come into the practice facility and then just whatever it is on Xbox or PC, I can't remember what the options button, but go into your options menu anyway. Um because you will come straight into here in the driving range. But just get down to swing calibration. Also as well, you will as I just mentioned there automatically come onto the driving range and it's all oh, it's slightly different to TGC 2019 when you go into the pra practice facility you won't have the options on the main menu for driving range put in practice or chip in practice so you just come into your options and you can come down here to practice and then that'll give you the options to go into one of the other uh, areas of the facility but swing calibration is the one that we want to do and basically all you do is as soon as you load it up um, what it's going to get you to do I'm not going to do them here now I'll do a couple as I'm talking but it's basically you're going to have no hood and as you can see take 10 full power swings to calibrate your swing try to be consistent with your swing timing to achieve optimal results so pretty much it's just take a swing hopefully you hit it straight <laughs> or hit, get a perfect tempo and uh, you just do that 10 times and you will get your downswing optimized what i'll do is i'll just skip forward through this right up to where we get it calibrated all right so here we are now on the 10th and final swing and once this hits down the fairway You'll get the little message now then that pops up and it says perfect downswing timing has been calibrated so not to be saying this in a mean way but no longer can anybody on any one of the platforms say the other platforms play easier than the platform that i'm on uh, it, it's gonna it's certainly gonna be helpful with that um and i do highly recommend it. as well if you do change your clubs as your clubs will have different stats maybe each time you maybe get a new club just go in just hit them 10 shots and just recalibrate your perfect downtime or downswing timing next up we have choose the clubs that are right for you and feel free to pause the video if you want to have a look at the yardages that i have here on the right side for the clubs that i have currently in my bag at the moment um i've what i've tried to do is i've tried to balance them in a similar way to what i've done in tgc2 and tgc2019 for just gradual uh, step ups in yardage keeping them fairly close but trying not to have too much of a gap in between and um, fairly balanced in that sense um so i mean as you can see at the 10.5 degree driver carries 287 fairly similar to the master clubs in tgc 2019 then dropping down to the three wood five wood four through nine iron 46 degree pigeon wedge 50 degree gap wedge 54 degree sand wedge and 58 degree lob wedge um what you can do as well, just before I go into the statistics part of it, is down the bottom you'll see it should be Y if you're on Xbox or using a controller on PC. Don't know about keyboard and mouse, but you can press triangle or Y. And you can actually customize your clubs. Uh, not club head wise anyway, not with the branded ones. Uh, I haven't actually had a look at the, the HP Studios ones, but you can change your shaft. Uh, so if you want to have a nice bright blue shaft on your clubs, uh, feel free to do so. They're not, th not 
overly expensive either like for this particular one it's only 60 coins and then that'll be available for all drivers you can do the same then for your wedges uh, woods the whole lot and you can also change your grips as well so throughout all mine i just i just put the blue uh yeah the blue grips on but what we'll do now is we'll just have a quick look if i press square what should be i believe x on an xbox controller again keyboard and mouse i don't know and um, we'll have a look here at the stats so what i was saying about choosing the clubs that are right for you um as you can see i mean i've got pretty much almost a max distance carry for this driver but it's not very good with the shot shape and our forgiveness so i've got to be really really fairly precise when it comes to getting the downswing for a perfect tempo but it's a, quite a good swing plane so i don't have to worry too much about keeping it inside the the white line on this on the shot feedback uh distance control not the best but it, it depending on the clubs that you have um it'll be a lot easier if, if you're doing like partial shots and stuff um but the clubs that i went with anyway for the driver i have the callaway maverick max for the three wood and five wood i went with the TaylorMade sim max for the four iron and for the nine iron as well i'll get on to what i mean by that now in a second i went with the callaway maverick standard for the five through eight irons i have the TaylorMade sim max os and then for the four wedges i have the callaway jaws md5 black and you never you don't need to worry about putters um no matter what there's no stats on them so it's pretty much just what looks good to you if you, i suppose you could say um so if one appeals to you more so feel free to go with that but i just have the ben hogan bhb01 um but i mentioned there a moment ago with the likes of my forearm i wanted to change that out um when i was swapping them around and i thought i'd go with this just for the stats but the reason why I only have it on the four and the nine iron, and that is if we go in here and we will just select it. So yeah, it should be this one. As you can see, I've I've only got the options for a four or a nine iron. But whereas if I come back out and what we'll do is we'll have a look at the wedges. So the wedge that I currently have equipped is the TaylorMade Sim Max. And if I click on that again, as you can see i've actually got the options for four down through nine so i can go through all the irons with that if i want um which to be honest i may actually switch to actually no i think the the maverick actually has a little bit longer distance actually i must have a little comparison uh let's have a little look pretty much the same actually i think uh, but again it's all down to personal preference and what you what you're going to feel comfortable with so as you can see like i mean i've got a very good forgiveness on these on these um on these wedges and what i'll do is actually just come back out really quick yeah i've got a very good forgiveness so i mean it's not too difficult to get it into the perfect downswing and the swing plane is quite forgiven as well um but you do have the forgiveness zone either side of the swing plane so it's not going to matter too much if you do push up all the ball slightly and it's got quite good distance drop distance control if i can get my words out so you can really you can get a little bit long and just spin that ball right back to the hole um, just be careful if you do hit a bit of a slow you're coming back off that green next up we have difficulty and this is going to be a crucial one um now it'll, it'll all depend as well society wise uh some societies may be locked to a specific difficulty so just say for example if you enter into a true sim um society it may have a certain difficulty uh i have a feeling the majority are going to go with pro um, if you want to think of the difficulties comparing them to TGC 2019 we've got the six difficulties so we've got the beginner amateur pro-am pro master and legend so again as I was saying there in comparison to TGC 2019 amateur swing difficulty would be basically beginner clubs pro-am will be pro clubs and pro will be master clubs so I'm comfortable enough now with the pro clubs they do still give a little bit of a challenge um if you're just ever slightly off on your tempo uh master maybe some societies might go for that it is quite difficult but the the legend is a very very difficult you really really need to be very very precise i mean you have got a hair tin window for your downswing tempo to get that perfect as well as for your uh your swing plane so choose wisely but i would say but per personally myself i will be majority of the time playing on pro i may just mess around the odd time playing on master or legend but whatever difficulty you go with you can customize them to your heart's content so whatever suits you best so i mean you can turn on or off your swing times so that'll be your shot feedback you can turn on 
the distance control meter or the power bar at the bottom so i personally have that off you can have it to percentage only where it's just going to show the percent or you can have it to where it only comes on for putting and i'll get onto that again in one of the other tips or you can have it on completely so on will display the distance control meter beneath your feet and it'll show you when that little white bar is going up so you can have that for every single shot if you want um distance distance control assist if you have this on limits the backswing based on the intended distance so if your shot defaults to say your your full carry distance is 90 yards on a club but the shot has defaulted on that club to 60 yards or something like that it's going to limit you um but adds the overswing zone to partial shots uh put preview again this will society wise this will depend i presume that a lot of societies will have this turned off by default uh but you can obviously have it at zero you can have it at three per round four nine per round 18 per round or unlimited per round um and when you're actually doing it unlimited i don't actually know i haven't tested it in a round itself but in the practice facility itself i do know that if you do a put preview you can then come back to your golfer and you can redo it again so you can adjust your put slightly just say slightly or maybe you're a cup off to the left of where you need to be so you can just adjust your aim and redo it and just see if you've got it online then uh course yardage this has changed quite a bit um now hopefully it will be patched in maybe uh after release at the moment it doesn't seem to be the case but it does still show up on the screen and that is the elevation changes so if you've got the course yardages on you will have your elevation and stuff but if you're playing on the likes of true sim and you have other things turned off or maybe the society has them turned off and you've only got the book only you're just going to have your distances to the pin um or fr from where you currently are at that time um then you, i mean you can turn on or off all your provisions so that'll be your, your shot arc and where your shot will go provided you hit it well so you can i have all of these turned off uh, so there's your trajectory arc there and uh, scout camera pretty much the usual so you can have it turned on or completely off or else you've got the u the ui off so scout cam without the aiming reticle so you'll just aim down but there'll be no no circle there on the screen uh, i just have that on personally myself at the moment lie grid as per pretty much we all know that green grid uh, pin preference out or in if you haven't already seen if you're watching this video as soon as it goes live you won't have seen it but if you're watching it after uh, you'll see my very first round where i actually had the pin preference set to in and it's actually a bit of a mistake i personally would suggest having it out when you put the pin in it will still remain in after you take a put if you do want that but if you have it in by default and say you have a da you have a just a little tap in and maybe you just slightly overhit it there is a chance that it will bounce back off the pin so for those short puts maybe just take it out but having it out by default you can just pop it back in if you want um aiming marker so you can have it on which will show the distance and elevation information that'll be both on and off the green um marker only off the green you'll just have the circle with a little arrow in the middle pointing pretty much where your ball is going to touch down and then on the puts on the green it'll just show that arrow for where you're aiming as well or you can have it completely off if you want wind speed pretty much the same have it all on or have it meter only so true sim style and finally uh your distance display so i have it set to carry which displays only the carry distance in the in the user interface or you can have a total and what this will do is this will show you the rollout of the ball as well so maybe just for example you're hitting five wood in it'll have 250 we just said throw out a number there for example 250 yards is your carry distance but then it might have a plus 10 beside it so what that tells you is you're going to get 260 up say perfectly flat terrain you're going to hit the ball 250 yards and it'll roll out for about 10 yards so that is all of that but you can really really customize and fine tune all the difficulties to what you want so i mean if i wanted to if i should have gone the other way it would have been quicker if i go up to legend um actually i'll, tell you, I'll do it default there we go so on legend and i can still turn on and off as you notice there it's highlighting right up here at the top for what the difficulty gameplay difficulty preset is but as soon as i come down here it's going to be on swing difficulty legend but i can now change this and you'll see right up the top it's changed to custom so i can still even though i've gone with legend difficulty i can still turn things on and off so just say for example you want provision elevation to be on while you're on legend difficulty you're more than welcome to do that you can really really customize the difficulty settings to your to your liking in this game
So next up we have the haptic feedback and that is the vibration in your controller. No idea what way does it work if you're doing mouse and keyboard uh, on PC. But pretty much this is a very very good tool if you want to do partial swings and you're not you, you don't have the power bar on. Maybe it's disabled in a certain society or you, uh, you just have it off yourself personally. But pretty much we have a full shot here on the driver. And just say for example the fairway ends sort of where this ball collector is um, and so I want to run up to the fairway if I pull back to here now when I come back as I pull back right now where that where I'm pulling back to rather than coming all the way up to the top my controller is vibrating out here so if I just take a quick shot not the best tempo a little bit fast but it's very good for getting those partial shots so on the likes of pitches or flops or anything like that or even as i say off the tee with the driver and there you go i'll come up i have still have a bit of room on the fairway if that were to be the case if the fairway to end where that ball, a ball collector were um, very very useful tool um also for getting a feel for your putts and i'll be moving on to that now in a second um what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump really quickly over to the putting green for the next one Alright, so here we are down on the putting green now, and then you will notice down the bottom of the screen I do now have the power bar on. And this is kind of a combination of the previous one for the haptic feedback and for the power bar. Um, so with the haptic feedback it works as well for your putting, but it's very, very subtle. I don't know what it would be like on an Xbox controller, but on PS4 I find it's very, very sensitive. So I mean, I need to, in order to get the ball up close to this hole anyway, I'm not going to read it. Um, apparently I still have the green grids off. But... As I'm pulling back, as I get closer and closer to the percentage required, we'll just take that, that's a good tempo there, I can feel the controller vibrating, so that's telling me you need to put there, and this is actually tracking pretty well. <laughs> that's a fluke. That is a pure another fluke. But um, it's a very good thing if, again, I don't know the full details, uh, I haven't gone into the societies yet personally myself to see what way they can be set up, but if a society president has it set where the power bar is not going to be on haptic feedback is going to come in very very useful for that um what other way it works as well is for the putting even though we have the power bar on now we can see where we're going but with the haptic feedback with it being so subtle one tip that i will give for the putting is pull back slowly as you can see i mean i'm pulling back nice and slow there i can get it straight into that zone into that white zone nicely but the slower you pull back, if you don't have the power bar on, you'll feel, and if you have a good grip on your controller, you'll feel that very, very subtle little vibration. And that was a little bit under hip, but it was starting to vibrate there, and a little bit short. It's well, six inches short, or something like that. nine inches to be precise, nine inches short. But um, I do personally suggest for power bar, if you do struggle with putting, getting the weight right, because putting is very, very sensitive in this game compared to... TGC 2019 and if you have seen my first ever round on PGA Tour 2K21 you will see the meltdown that I had on one particular hole um actually well not one particular hole a few holes but one in particular you'll know the hole if you've seen the video already or you will know it if you do if you do watch the video after this one um but where for example this put is apparently 37 feet down one doesn't look very much like 37 feet but just say for example uh, let me see, we will pick, alright, apparently, yeah, that's about 37 feet, right, so we'll go with this one. In TGC 2019, what I would do for this particular put is I would go, one, two, now I have way over hit that, what I'll do is I'll turn on Auto Mulligan, just so we can do it. So what I do, with this green speed being 144, that's down a foot, um, I wouldn't give it actually 37, I'd give it maybe a two and a half count, so one, oh, that didn't come all the way back. One, two, and that is way over here. Now I would normally, actually, I'd probably actually count a little bit slower than that, but look how far that ball has run. You will eventually, if not regularly, run into problems as well if you don't have the power bar on, where you've got a two-foot putt. I have, I have smashed the ball over the hole so many times already in the rounds that I've played with this early access to the game, over the hole, just by being just a fraction of a second just one percent off a little bit too powerful and it's, and it's just cling filmed itself it's like somebody's put cling film over the hole balls just cruise straight over or you're just coming up that little bit shy 
Um, so what I suggest, high, a very good tip for putting, is just pull the stick back ever so slightly, just let it come up. Just If you don't have the power bar on, as I said, just feel for that very subtle little vibration and then put away. And although it's not online, it is downhill, so I went a little bit further, but you won't go too far past is basically pretty much what I'm trying to say. So a very useful tip, tip if you're not using the power bar or if you are using the power bar. It, it, the two combined will help you get a good feel for the button, but it is, as I did mention, a lot more sensitive than it was in TGC 2019. All right, so we're back on the driving range now for this one, uh, tip number six, and that is going to be for getting your club carry distances um, both straight up shots, loft the whole lot. Um, in the days of TGC 2, TGC 2019, TGC 1 as well also, um, you're gonna have to go through the long process of testing out your clubs to see what your carry distances and stuff are gonna do, or hopefully maybe somebody would do them for you. And uh, then, you could, then you'd know exactly what your clubs are gonna carry. But what we can do now is what I've gone ahead and turned on is I have turned on ProVision True Shot. I have turned on Shot Trajectory and i believe there was another one and aim marker i've turned that to fully on so that's going to display the aim marker with distance and elevation information in the circle and all you have to do to get and what you can do is you can do like a spreadsheet or you can just note it down like in the memo section most smartphones have those you can just jot them down um, or even just jot them down onto a piece of paper and as you'll see i've got the shot arc here on the screen now and i've got the 140 yards down eight not going to worry about the elevation change, just the 140 yards. So just using the 9 iron here, for example. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll go up, we'll go down three of them. Uh, so we have the driver. If I hold the true shot button, and if I just, if I want to see, right, I've got 287 default carry. If I fully loft it, going to be no change. If I really, if I go negative on the attack angle, you'll see it's now gone up to 291. If I go fully up to the top on the right stick, it's drop down to 283 if I now adjust and fully loft it it's going to bump itself up to 284 or if I fully push the boat sticks up 239 is going to be the carry now that's obviously not include this your carry distance not including your rollout but just say for example you want to know what your wedges are going to do so let's say a pitching wedge I've got a 136 carry here again if I bring it up if I fully loft that again it doesn't take into account into account wind either as well as elevation so Gone from a 136 carry, just fully lofting it by itself, it'll drop it down to a 127. And if I increase the attack angle or go negative attack angle, it's going to bring it back to 124. So just say, for example, absolutely no wind, uh, the, maybe the pin is 118 away. And I hit this fully full loft, full attack angle on it, get it to carry 124, it'll bite provided you have enough room and it'll come straight back up towards the hole for you. So it's a very, very quick and easy thing to do. Um, what you'll also see as well is I still have to add this into my spreadsheet for these clubs at the moment is Just say for example, you need to hit a big draw. Maybe you've gone off the fairway and you're around a tree So we'll reset that 136 if I go full fade first or if I come out a bit You'll see there's no change, but just watch that yard. It's coming out a bit. It's, I've lost a yard halfway. I've lost two yards Coming all the way out now. I've lost 10 yards carry from doing a full fade near enough nine ten yards anyway and it'll be pretty much it'll be exactly the same for a full draw uh, again if i inc if i increase the attack angle or decrease it it's going to adjust it again and similar as well if i increase or decrease the loft and you really really have so many more options when it comes to getting the shot that you want for getting onto the green so whether you use the shot trajectory and having the pro vision and everything like that on or not if you just want to strictly use this for uh just getting your carry distances it is going to be so much easier and quicker and another little tip that i will give a little add on to this one is do it if you do jot them down on a piece of paper or into your phone or on a spreadsheet or something like that anytime you change your clubs because you're going to have different stats on different clubs you might lose say if i change this pitching wedge out now for a different one um I think yeah, it's tailor-made wedges that I have on. If I switch them up for Callaways, they might have a the Callaways might have a little bit less carry, or they might have a little bit more. It'll adjust and dependent also as well on the degree of your club. So, if you have a 56 degree wedge and you bump it to a 58, you're gonna have different carry distances and it'll adjust accordingly. So, if any time you get a new club or you change your clubs, all you have to do is just come in here quickly and just adjust your lofts. Only takes a few minutes. Jot them down 
and then you're good to go. Alright, we are back onto the putting green for this next one. And this is going to be your tempo colour zones. Um, and what you'll see is if we go into a pre like I've got this put set up, so I'll just imagine now I'm in a career mode event, a society event, or whichever it may be. If I click on the left stick, I'll go in, or if you're swinging with the right stick, click on your right stick, and I'll go into the practice one. And as you'll see, using the haptic feedback, getting a feel for it, I've got that white now, it comes up, it's very, very fast here, but just watch down at the feedback, you'll see the little white rectangle with the power percent come on. And as you see, that just flashed up there in the red, so I was too heavy on that. So I would have blasted the ball hole, uh, way past, just slightly in the grey there. So I was just a little shy. It's 45% looks to be the range for what I would need for this, so that was about 43. But once you're in that white zone, taking a little practice swings, and I should be able to club up here. Let's uh, try it here. So there we go, 101% power. I've gone over the 100%. 101% again. 98%, just a little bit up, just a little bit out, but obviously 99, 100 will be, probably, if I can get it right, <laughs> it would help. Uh, 101. My tempo was a little bit off. There we go, 100% power in the white. So that's your perfect zone, those colours. So when you do that in your practice swing, you'll get the feel and you'll be able to match it up with the haptic feedback. Get a feel for where you need to pull the club back to. Um, You'll also see it as well in your downswing tempo. So if we do perfect here, right, we're in the fast, just slightly into the fast. It'll still pull left, uh, but it shouldn't affect it too much. If I go really fast, that's not really, really fast. But there we go, into the fast. That is really, really going to pull. And that's not even a very fast. That hopefully, there we go. There's a very, very fast. Well, not a very, very fast, but a very fast. Um, but finding that tempo, again, just barely onto the perfect, but that'll keep it nice and straight, that would. There's a slow. So, greys are not too bad. White is your perfect zone for both your power and your tempo. Whereas grey, into the grey, you're going to get that push or pull. We've got a very slight push there on that one. And a bit of a pull. Maybe a little bit of extra distance here as well on that fast. But again, not going to be overly punished. There's a beautiful swing there on the tempo. Slap bang down the middle of it. But just use your practice swings and just get a feel for that tempo. Using the haptic feedback or if you do have the power bar on. And it will help you so much more when you're taking your shots. So we're just out in the fairway now in the practice facility of the driving range. Uh, for tip number eight. And that is to actually take your time with your shots. So I mentioned there a moment ago about putting. To pull the, put, just pull the stick back slowly. Uh, to, to get that haptic feedback or to get it nicely into that white zone if you do have the power bar on to get your get the weight of your putts right um, but for your off the green shots so your approach shots in so just say for example we have this shot here into this green got a 12 mile per hour wind 136 up 10 so playing about 139 um, I can pull this back really loft it up there All right let's just see just out of curiosity how well this one goes that was a good tempo there. That was a very good tempo. Nicely down the middle. But all of your clubs, they're all going to have different tempos. It was kind of a thing in TGC 2019, but not as severe as what you've got now in 2K21. As you see, I hit a slow there. Now I'm going to lose a lot of yardage, but it's going to hold pretty straight due to the wind, and it wasn't an overly slow push on it. Um... But again, I say the angle of the wind did did counter the push off. But you will find those very slight different tempos. There's a nice tempo there again on the shot. But also when you start adding or taking off, uh, adding on loft to get that higher trajectory or increasing your attack angle, decreasing it, um, your tempo is going to be a little bit, it's going to change quite a bit. So what you may feel is a good tempo for your driver, completely different probably going to be completely different for an iron or a wedge shot into a green um, so what would be a perfect downswing on your driver could well be could well be more of a slow that speed that you push forward and stick could well be a slow for your wedge shots um, especially if you start adjusting the loft and the attack angle as well so just take your time maybe take the take the couple of practice swings so just into the practice swing just 
get a feel for it that was a little bit slow take it again that was very slow there that one speeding it up a bit that is beautiful let's see if we can get three in a row no, just slightly into the fast but don't be afraid to take the practice swings whether you're off whether you're hitting an approach shot even a tee shot or you're on the green putting if you're in a match with somebody don't be worrying about them you're playing your own game just take those shots make sure that you take your time with them the way that you would on a real golf course take your time line your shot up get a feel for the swing and then once you're comfortable i'm hitting a lot of slows here but once you're comfortable <laughs> once you're comfortable with your swing that you have the tempo down but it's still not guaranteed even though i hit it perfect there and just a little bit into the slow there let's see if we can get one more perfect all right we've got a slow let's just see if we can get it pretty much on the perfect for the actual shot a little bit fast that time because i was trying to get that slow out of my head but the other reason why i say take your time with the shots is it is it's a different ball game compared to tgc 2019 uh, i believe it was jim gem said in one of his uh preview videos of the game is that when he went back on to tgc 2019 after playing 2k21 it actually felt like he was playing in slow motion your swing is quite a bit faster compared to 2019 so depending on the clubs again which i mentioned in previous uh tip depending on your forget shot forgiveness for getting that tempo right that's why i said choose the clubs that are right for you ones that feel good for you that you can get a consistent downswing perfect tempo on them because especially as i mentioned just a moment ago when you start adjusting the loft uh, and attack angle as well you are going to be we'll just let this shot reset we'll just see how much we're impacted with each one so if you have a look now on the right hand side at the feedback you'll see i am actually fully lofted so there we go that's why i wasn't hitting it so if i yeah here we have a straight up shot not too bad very very slightly into the fast there but if we just watch how much that's going to shrink down now as i increase the loft it's going to shrink down a little bit nothing major but if i start uh, doing the attack angle it's going to shrink down and i mean look at the swing plane there as well it's really 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 changing if we just reset that back that's not too bad but that is definitely one thing that i will suggest just take your time with your shots once you once we're, we're all a little while into the game maybe we'll start by anybody who's like myself who would speed play around you'll start getting that rhythm where you can knock, the, knock those sh shots out a little bit quicker but in the early stages of the game when you're getting yourself going i do highly recommend just taking your time with the shots don't be just okay i've hit it off the tee got it in the fairway okay this looks to be the distance 140 did pin take off your wind or add on your wind and elevation and be banging out those shots within five to ten seconds of addressing the ball just take that a little bit longer get your shots in there so moving on to tip number nine we're still here on the fairway uh pretty much just picked up where we left off from the previous tip and that is going to be i mentioned not long ago when we were doing the carry distance distances and stuff about uh the draw and fade and a great thing to do now is if we actually set up a shot and what i'll do real quick i was meant to turn it back on just so you can see just in case you didn't notice it in any of the other guys videos or just a moment ago uh where are we trajectory so we'll just turn that on really quick in tgc 2019 tgc 2 and everything if you wanted to hit a draw say if i wanted to get around these trees and the pin was somewhere over here where the gallery is we'll just say here at the gallery just in and around about there if i wanted to hit a draw what i'd have to do was i'd have to aim out here and then hit that draw in and because the ball would just take a straight line off the club and then start to bend around but now the way that it's done now in tgc 20 or in pga tour 2k21 should i say is we're aiming just dead at here just say for example the pin is right there i want to draw the ball i am just going to i just need to and of course i don't have it on for the <laughs> for the trajectory bear with me two seconds i've got to put that back on um so which one are we doing i have to find my way around because as i say i don't use them myself um trajectory provision true shot what we'll do is we'll actually just turn all of these on just so i make sure that i do have the right one on this should be it now so there we go as you can see i put on i put on that there i only need just to get around those trees there 
if they were if I was right up at them just to do that that's actually still not even enough but I can increase and as you can see your golfer is going to adjust his position so I can come around the tree this way if I want or I can come around this way he's going to, he's going to change his uh, stance still going to be aiming to where you have that marker so provided you get a nice good clean shot you've accounted for the wind the elevation that ball let's see if we got, I don't know what the wind speed is here but we'll just hit a good shot and as you can see that is coming right around nicely oh nearly clipped the tree there came around a little bit further must be the wind but no need to now aim out to adjust and take into account for your fades and draws so maybe you have maybe just some overhanging trees just off the off the tee of a certain hole you need to just fade it around you don't need to aim out and then adjust your fade accordingly then to get it around you can just aim where you want and if you're still straight off the tee you're going to be hitting those trees just hit your fade you're going to get around those trees just nice and for the final tip we'll just come down onto the first tee at tpc louisiana and that is going to be whether you're playing a regular round like this so even if you can use the scout cam get down the fairway so on so forth it's it's great for if you've got long holes so maybe a par five that you're not going to reach into it is going to be get used to your yardage book and this is such a useful tool so as you can see now on the yardage book we've got down near the bottom left where i am now at the moment on the back tees on the tips and it's got 256 up there so it's going to it's going to play 256 to there and for and you'll see that you'll see above that white line it'll say 143 where there's the flag so from that position it's going to be 143 yards to the pin so pretty much just say for example this bunker just say let's uh let's hit a shot uh well this is a par four so say for example i've got a 287 yard carry uh just say for example i want to leave pretty much a full shot in so roughly roughly a sand wedge I think it's about a 112 carry so maybe I want to get to about here that's 287 there off the tee so I'm going to get a bit of roll out I'm probably going to leave myself closer to about 100 yards in provided I hit it well so I'll take a test shot probably going to go completely wrong but we'll see now anyway um so yeah about there so we'll go full shot off the tee so down to here hopefully I can hit this well the wind is picking up A little bit fast, but hopefully the wind, yeah, pull it around just nice. Not too punishing, there's John in the background, forgot to turn him off for this one. But there we go, we got 294, so that's now left me with 105 yards to the uh, to the pin. Now, you don't have, unfortunately, not currently anyway at the moment, on the yards, but we don't have the elevation. Um, but pretty much you'll see that 105 yards is going to lead me down two inches to the pin. Actually, I did the wrong button there. Because I'm not the sharpest tool in the in the box, but if we press R1, our left bumper, um, as you can see there, it's right up the pin. So it was 105 yards to the pin. So again, maybe I want to see card to roll out. Okay, what's it to the front of the green from where I am? It's going to be 90, 91 yards, and so then I know I've got plenty of room to work out. Or maybe if I know I have got about a 10 yard rollout, so we've got 105, so I want it to touch down, we'll just say for example, at the 95 yard mark, so it's going to leave me 10 yards. I've got enough room to get onto the green and account for that uh, rollout from the club, although I'm not going to get it from a, from a lob wedge, or from a sand wedge, should I say. But it is a very, very useful tool, as I say, if, especially if you're using, or if you're playing a true sim, where you're not going to be able to use that scout cam, it's going to be a very, very useful tool. Because you will be able to see, okay, just say, for example, we're off the tee. Say here, we're on the tee now, and right where the flag is, so at 105 yards away, that's where the first bunker is. So you know, okay, the, that bunker starts at 105 yards, or we we'll say the front of the green, actually, the front of the green would be better to use. We'll come back down. So we'll just say this is the front of the, this is the start of the bunker. This is the end of the bunker here, and I'm coming off the tee. I know, okay, it's 92 yards to where the bunker starts it's 109 yards to carry the bunker and get onto the green and then touch down it's a very very useful tool for doing that so i do highly suggest even in your regular rounds just the odd time just play around like get a feel for it, see what way it works and um if you do venture if you've never done it before but you decide to venture into the true sim world of uh the golf club or pga tour 2k21 it'll be a very very valuable tool but again it's just so you it'll be so useful for setting yourself up with full shots rather than so you can you can set up you can use a partial as i say if it's a long par five you're not going to reach it into 
but it looks like if you're hitting a three wood up there you're going to leave yourself at an awkward little distance you can dial it back a club or you can do a partial swing and from going by the yardage book you can leave yourself with a nice full shot that you personally would be comfortable hitting in and getting close to that pin and hopefully draining a birdie putt or if it's a par five and you can get there in two you do work it out that it's a nice good shot in there you can get it in reasonably close and get away with a needle or maybe you might hold it out from off the green so definitely i do highly suggest getting a feel for that yardage book because it is an absolutely excellent tool that they now have in 2k21 so finally i'm just going to throw in just one bonus tip so we call it 11 tips why not um and that is simply just have fun just remember it's a video game you are 100 percent maybe not right out the gates i say i certainly struggled i mean again i've mentioned a couple of times in this video already if you've seen my very first round i think it was a plus five plus six i had a couple of meltdowns and some holes because i was still getting a feel for i had that tgc 2019 train of thought in my head for how to play the round i was trying to play it too quick and keep up with that sort of pace and it wasn't working out but after getting a little bit of a feel for the game i'm starting to get some some better scores you see at the moment i've currently got a handicap plus nine um but you are going to see those top players are going to have their low scores it is going to happen regardless even i regard no matter what the difficulty that they're playing on as well you will see you will see those really really elite players as well even on the legendary are going to be able to hit those low scores don't just don't take it too serious as i said it's just a game have fun play it for yourself enjoy it play to beat yourself have fun meet up with your meet up with your friends your mates online or even locally if you've got a few buddies over and you're you're kicking back relaxing having a bit of a laugh want to play a few rounds of golf just to have fun enjoy it for what it is set the game up how you want in terms of difficulty choose all your clubs take all of that into account but the most important tip that i'm leaving you with is just as i say i can't say it enough just have fun don't take it too serious it's only a video game if you managed to make it this round of video thank you very much for watching i hope you did enjoy it if you're watching this before the game has launched i hope you're looking forward to playing i truly cannot thank 2k enough for giving me early access to the game i have been absolutely hooked on it ever since they did if you're watching this after the game is released i hope you're enjoying it i hope you find any of the tips that i've given in this video useful and they help you along your way in your career on pga tour 2k21 but until the next one thanks very much for watching take care have yourselves a good one and bye for now